Sunday morning, everybody. Welcome back to Miniatures Mayhem and More. And keep in mind, it is a Sunday morning. That's why you will see me in my bonnet looking melanin popping as ever. <laughs> That's the best way I can put it. Good morning, guys. Um, I know you guys are probably going to be shocked because this is a fast to dark video for me. And um, because I've been absentee, um, that might be a little surprising to some of you guys. But check this out. Um, if you didn't watch the video I put out um, earlier this morning, Sunday, and you see this on Monday, the reality is that I actually found the perfect streaming app to do what I wanted to do on my videos, um, not using up space and all this equipment that I bought when I really did, had no clue as to what I was doing. So, um... Now that I have my uh, computer studio, <laughs> then, um, yeah, it's working for me. So, you know, I got the, everything set up, and it's working absolutely fine for me, except for this cord in, in the video. Hang on. And my camera twisting. There we go. So, um, if you can ignore the cord, actually, I probably can get it out of the way because it, 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 if it's not going to bother you it's going to bother me so there we go so hey guys I just want to um, you know get some content out that's that's number one number two I want to um, touch base with you guys and number three I wanted to kind of keep the ball rolling you know I got some momentum I'm excited and um, just ready to do this so um in the last video, I gave you a dad update. He is more mobile, which means that he does not need to be transferred to and from wheelchair. He can get up with a little assistance and move with a walker. So for us, that is a blessing, a blessing, a blessing. My back appreciates his efforts, okay? Um, so with that being said, he's pretty much the same. What I wanted to talk to you guys about, which is something I mentioned in the last video, um, is my journey. And I can't say that it was a journey, but it was a realization that I needed to regroup. And so I needed to regroup to the point that I did not need to be in a relationship, and I no longer am. Um, I had to get over the guilt that I was feeling, although I knew that this was the best thing for me. So there's a disease process going on with my former significant other, and it's quite serious. And there was a lot of guilt with um, not seeing him anymore while he's sick. But there was the reality that um, although having a disease that could possibly be terminal actually two disease processes one which could be terminal um, the other where you are really disabled um, because you have to go to dialysis um, three times a week is is another thing so um, is he went through the grieving process he you know, had a lot of anger. He was back and forth between not denial because he's accepted that it, it it is what it is. It was just anger and frustration at not being able to do stuff, having to rely on me financially uh, to some extent, and then, but at the same time, you're angry. And so, while professionally. I understand this is the other person in a relationship and as the strong black woman I am I didn't appreciate it so in the process of trying to be understanding sympathetic and you know the whole stand by your man thing um, yeah I was losing myself and not you guys all know what's going on with my parents so 
you know, I'm being a caregiver for two different people, so um, nobody was worried about how I was doing. And I think the thing that hit home with me was the fact that anything I said, I have a couple irons in the fire as far as entrepreneurship goes, and anything I said, it was negative. I spoke about um, the fact that I wanted to go and do a little bit of travel nursing, get away, um, just be by myself, and make some of that um, pandemic travel nurse money. <laughs> um, negative. Negative about me going. And I wasn't saying I'm moving out the country. I'm moving to another state. The relationship was not going to go anywhere. It's just was saying that I need some me so it, it was like it was never anything about me um, and so it was just time to let it go and the crazy thing is that his ass blocked me and he blocked me from calling he blocked me from one phone he did not block me on the other phone so if I want to call him I can but I don't want to because he showed his true colors. And I cannot think of a reason that he blocked me other than he called. I was doing my laundry, came back up, said, You missed the call three minutes ago, call back, I'm blocked. And I didn't know it at first, but you know what? That's cool. By day, the next day, and I was still going straight to voicemail, I knew that. Um, again, I have no idea what I did except for the fact that I have been taking those measures as self-improvement. And he didn't like it. And how trifling, evil, and mean can you be? I don't know. But you take, 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 and you didn't took enough from me. Um, I'm about to, you know, give to myself because, you know, that saying, I can do bad by myself. I don't need any help. That That's that part right there. Um, now I have been helping him emotionally, spiritually, financially. I don't know how petty <laughs> I am going to get about my money, but, uh, um, yeah, I probably going to get a little petty about that because I want my money. And, um, one of the things that I did was every time I gave him money, I made sure that we discussed that in the text and that um, we defined the fact that it was me loaning him some money. So, hang on guys, I'm doing this diamond painting that says AB 819. And I see... Uh, 819 but nothing about this says AB right let me just make sure I got that right while I do that I'm going to continue talking so yeah um, in my effort to be a better person I'm going to try to relax relate and release relax <laughs> relate and release I'm really going to try um, to chalk it up as a loss because I did not mind helping him um, but we did go into that um, with anything that I gave during the period as being alone and for you to block me um, oh AB 819 so they gave me a regular and an AB alright now I'm going to go with the AB and see what they do anyway um you guys, if you have any comments on that, any suggestions how I should um, handle the money part, please let me hear what you have to say because I've been so good with um, putting out that positive energy, meditating, all that good stuff, um, and listening to what the universe has to tell me. And um, I honestly don't even want the negative energy I'm kind of leaning towards let it go because if I say I believe in karma which I do um, I don't have to do anything it's already done to him 
what it, what he did to me, I already done to you. And that's a quote from the color purple. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to let it go. But if you guys have input, please let me know if you've been in that situation before. Next thing I wanted to really talk about is um, this health journey that I'm on. So, I am doing intermittent fasting. I am also doing the keto diet while I'm inter intermittent fasting. The thing is, um, is that this stuff really works. Now, I know in a lot of religions, um, fasting is a thing that people do so that they are clear, no pollutants in their body, they are just drinking water, and it helps them to some extent get to a place where they can get spiritual actualization. So, um, I can see why this works, because um, in intermittent fasting, your body goes through these phases. Um, one of the phases is when it's actually when like I think you're about 12 to 6 12 to 14 or 16 hours in 12 to 14 hours you are actually burning um, ketones now my journey was this um, so I started the fasting um, at a 12 hour eat window 12 hour fast window um, I totally eliminated sugar from my diet um, and I got a gazillion keto recipes and I started to follow them and it really did not affect me that much. I did get um, like a um, sugar withdrawal headache, but other than that, I didn't have anything. I know people get keto flu. I know that people um, get keto breath, that people... Um, get a like an odor a vaginal odor or something from ketosis but um nope not me <laughs> didn't happen so I'm grateful for that part so the first week now let me tell you the first week I lost five pounds five pounds the second week I lost about three pounds the third week I think I lost like two pounds this week I, I'm at 11 pounds lost and this is Monday will be me going into my fourth week so I have lost a total of 11 pounds because I weighed myself this morning I try to just do the weight um once a week so I won't be stalking <laughs> stalking the scale and all these apps and my Fitbit and all that mess so um yeah so I'm really happy with it so I kind of fluctuated trying to figure out what was right for me and I'm actually right now on an um, 18 6 fast so I fast for 18 hours and I have a six hour eating window um, I was at 16 9 yeah and what happened there or 16 8 what happened there was um, I was starting to eat and then that one meal, that one meal that I ate to end my fast, I was full all day. So I might have had some keto snacks, something small, but um, yeah, I was um full. So I said, well, you know what? If I up my fasting hours, then maybe I will be able to eat a little more, get to my macros, and macros are the your daily intake of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats and calories. So carbs, protein, fat, and calories. So I um, tried it that way. So yeah, I wasn't hungry. So I was calling those um, my one meals a day. <laughs> and um, let's see, now I, I, I think that's a six. I don't like that then like that all right so I'm calling that a six so anyway I was um I ended up saying that the best bet for me for the times that I honestly get hungry 
was to do a 18 hour, six hour, 18 six fast eat cycle. So that is what I'm on now. As a matter of fact, I should be eating <laughs> and I'm still not hungry yet. So that is a good thing. One of the things that I did do was buy the ketone strips and um, I was, you know, letting go of ketone or spilling ketones in my urine. So I knew that, I, you know, ketosis was happening, but I was not fat adapted. Thank God it did not take me long to get fat adapted. And I, like the second week, I ended up having to buy the blood ketone monitor um, to monitor my blood levels to see what it was to make sure I was staying in a healthy level where I wasn't like my body wasn't in starvation mode and stuff like that. Um, I think a hundred percent of the initial weight loss was a water and B the total elimination of sugars. Now I find myself trying to celebrate the fact <laughs> that I um, had lost the 10 pounds and I was stuck to it in my exercises and everything. So, so happy with myself, right? So I go out and I buy my two favorite candies. I bought, and let me tell you how I bought my two favorite can candies. One of my favorites is Reese's. Reese's Cups for me have a season. This is Reese's Cups season because it's fall. I bought two of those, but I saw my other favorite. A chunky and chunkies are not in every doggone store. Why I buy like 10 of the six piece chunkies? Saying, okay, I saw them, I got them, they're hard to come by, so I'm just gonna have these so I can use it as a reward based system. Of course, okay, so I'm gonna eat the chunky. I'm not was gonna even eat it all, I was gonna eat two squares of the chunky because the uh, carbohydrates in there is re are ridiculous. So, I, I get it, I come home, I get all cozy, get ready to enjoy this, like eat the damn thing with my eyes closed, you know, that chocolate fix, and um, I ate that thing, I took the first bite, it tasted like cardboard full of sugar, cardboard full of sugar, now, I'm all about the healthy I'm all about the weight loss. But you gonna tell me you just broke up my relationship with chocolate? My relationship with chocolate is gone. And the only good chocolate on keto is dark chocolate. I don't eat dark chocolate. I didn't eat dark chocolate when I wasn't dying and wasn't trying to be healthy. I know darn well I did not just ruin my relationship with chocolate. I could take the man being gone. But the chocolate... I'm going to have to pray about this, and I'm going to ask you all to pray with me because I need my chocolate. So, anyway, it was grotesque. So, um, I got to say, if you know anybody borderline, diabetic, um, anybody that's, like, taking metformin, um, or even anybody on insulin, you all need to try this diet because I think... I think that um, you could honestly reverse the effects of diabetes or at the very least decrease the amount of insulin you use because you're not taking in a lot of carbs, which is not going to create a lot of glucose, which is going to work on your insulin resistance. And there you go. And we all know that insulin affects the gut, it affects everything. And once your gut is messed up, man, mm-mm, mm-mm. So um, the other thing, oh, you know what? I was doing some research on intermittent fasting before I started fasting. And the reality became um, that there was a change by the FDA, I guess it is, um, where they told us to stop eating all those fat. I remember that from when I was a kid. So fat became not a part of our diet. 
But then we created all these high carb foods where we are now all fat and diabetic. So that's the problem. So this diet also reverses that trend. And you know, they always tell you that um, your brain uses, or at least I learned in nursing school that your brain uses uh, glucose exclusively for energy. That's its main source of energy. The lies, the lies. So if you're not taking any carbs in, and let's say you are on an island and you haven't found any food yet, and it's day three, guess what? Your body's going to start using your fat and using ketones to fuel your brain. So, yeah, not everything is true. Um, I don't know about anybody else that's a nurse that may be listening to this, but I had a biology teacher that went through the crib cycle, how the cell um, processes stuff to make energy and ATP and all that mess. If you remember, I shouldn't even know those terms, but he was so into it, and it was a big part of um, what our final exam was. Anyway, that being said, it's a thing. It's a thing. So ketones are used for energy. They are not only used, you know, by other parts of your body. Your brain will use them, too, as a uh, tertiary third choice of energy. So I think it's like glucose, glucagon, and then ketones. Um, that That's a thing. I, I'm like, okay. So um, the when you get to, when you're fasting, you get to, let's say, your 14 to 16 hour. I think I went 12 to 14. So 14 to 16 hour. There's a thing called, um, I'm, and I may not pronounce this correctly, but autophagy. Autophagy. A-U-T-O-P-H-A-G-Y. Well, this is where your cells and proteins start to clean up and eat and recycle all those bad proteins, all those bad cells that are using energy in your body, um, which is at that point wasted energy. And I'm going to tell you, it helps with, which is part of correcting autoimmune response. You can see I kind of researched the hell out of this before I starved myself, <laughs> which I did not starve myself. I think at this point my stomach has shrunk. And I did honestly did not starve myself, but I deprived myself from the sugar that I was um, really used to. Um, so in autophagy, so as the cells are cleaning up your body, you know, you're doing some self-healing. And I, I am not going to show you guys yet. I'm sure in my videos you have gotten a glimpse of uh, the my hands, the palms of my hands where... Um, I have eczema is what they're calling it, but I don't think it's that. But my grandma had it too, and hers was way worse than mine. Mine's is only on the palm of my hands, and it's where my skin, I'm going to show you now, is thick and callous. This is better. It was way more than this, so it's here and here. Now, this, if you see the discoloration around here, 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 it was this whole thing. This is now clear. And softening this stuff is coming so I usually like sleep with this little mask so here here and this stuff is clearing up because it was all over here you can see where my hand is discolored this is totally smooth so this process is helping me to heal so a lot of times you guys will see me in my nursing shirts with the thumb holes or I'll have on wrist supports with the thumb holes because this is really embarrassing because I talk with my hands I, I do these videos with my hands so a lot of times I don't have on the nails because I don't want anything to irritate or get on my skin that may irritate it um, I use um, hemp lotion only because it really takes the itching away if I do put something um, different on it I don't want it to mess things up so I usually leave my hands dry while I am working on my projects. If I have something on, believe me, I have those wrist supports that cover up the palms so I won't mess up the, the glue or anything in any of these paintings. 
Um, let's see. What else do I do now that I'm on my health kick? I cook. I'm going to look at the camera like this. I cook. I don't know what year it was when I threw in the towel on that. It was a Thanksgiving. And I called all my kids, and they came over to my home for Thanksgiving, and I told them this will be the last Thanksgiving that your mom will be cooking. So pick your favorite things. I will cook whatever you guys want. And I did, and we had a beautiful Thanksgiving, and the cooking in my house ceased. It, it was time for me to sit down and time for them to start doing something, but that didn't happen. <laughs> anyway, um... What color was that? Oh, Lord. There we go. There we go. All right. So, um, I don't think I have spent this much time obsessing about what I cannot eat, making those healthy food choices in my life. It is annoying as hell, um, honestly. The one good thing is, is that it causes me to food prep. So, like today, I'll food prep for a few days. And then, and probably Wednesday, I'll do another little prepping session. But it, it, it's annoying. It's annoying as all get out. And um, what I thought about the other day as I was thinking about this SHIT is getting on my nerves is that... Um, had I been doing this from the beginning, I would not have, had I been watching what I was eating from the beginning, then I would not have put on the weight that I put on, and I would not have to do this diet. So that's just the way that I look at it. And um, as annoying as it is, I believe that while I won't be doing like strict keto like I am, I'm doing the strict keto to lose the weight quickly. I will not be doing strict keto once I lose or get to my goal weight. And I'm breaking my weight up in segments. So I was 179. I want to get to 150. When I get to 150, my next big push is going to be to get to 135, which I think is the high limit, if not over. I'm not going less than 135 um, on my for my BMI. So anyway, um, yeah, it, it, it has forced me to cook. So I, uh, this will become a... Hold on a second. Huh? Okay, I'll text you. So... Um, Sorry about that, guys. My mom is going to Walmart last minute um, shopping for Thanksgiving. And I need keto-friendly cake mix as well as keto-friendly icing. So, that being said, um, what was I going to say? She didn't throw me all off. Oh, intermittent fasting as a lifestyle. So, by this being more than several months of me doing this fast I am hoping that I can maintain this type of a lifestyle so that I can get to a point where I, I might be doing 18 6 I can eat what I want but I fast and I exercise out of sheer habit or at the very least get up and move around because that's what I learned I probably could sit here and diamond paint forever in a day and not get up but three times in a 12 hour period I need to move some so that is um, one of the benefits that I have found from this and hopefully um, can carry through and then if any of you guys were thinking about it um, I use the keto diet app I'm also in a group on Facebook and I use my Fitbit to monitor my activities as well as my sleep and also, um, I use an app called Fastic, which helps you to, uh, it sends you a reminder as far as your fast time, your windows and this and that, and as well as your con um, intake on water. Yeah, so um, one other thing that I've learned with this is I drink black coffee. 
that I believe was the hardest part of this journey was to come to grips with the fact that I could not have my morning coffee exactly the way I liked it. It it sucked, but I'm drinking black coffee and I'm learning to love it. I, I'm not there yet. I gotta find me some kind of coffee that really, 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 really tastes good. But I have not found that yet. Um, let's see, what else with this? Um, oh, exercise. I exercise every day. And I do at least 30 to 45 minutes a day. I do not exercise in, cons in a consecutive amount of time. I, I use this lady. She has a website or YouTube called Fast 50. And it's low impact exercises for persons who are over 50. And child, my knees love her. <laughs> Now, the, the stand-up exercises that she has me doing, my cousin told me, she's like, girl, your butt look good. Because she has you doing these body exercises and leg exercises, my glutes, my hamstrings, my thighs, they be on fire, straight fire, so I can feel it. So, yeah, that, mm, working it out. But that's the one thing I don't want to lose in a you know, the triple D's, they actually have gone down, I could tell, because I could do this, you know, comfortably before I was all out here. So, they have gone down. Luckily, I'm still fitting my bras, but I'm not trying to lose the boobage or the buttage. I'm not trying to lose anything um, that a man would like. <laughs> I'm trying to keep all of that. So, um, it has been interesting. It has been a huge change for me. I am a person who is always small. Get you, I'm five feet. I could never really be that big. I had my kids snap back. Um, I never really gained any weight. When I was in the military, I gained weight, but it was muscle. I was muscular. And, of course, muscle weighs more than fat. But, um, child, I remember I remember asking my cousin one time, who was, you know, kind of fat, um, how he gained weight because I was just too skinny. And he said, I just eat and go to sleep. So, yeah, y'all don't know how long I tried to eat and go to th sleep thing. It did not work. But post-menopause, this um, lack of metabolism or whatever the heck it's doing, hormones, I don't know. Um, it took me off my square, y'all. It took me off my square. I, I got a little chunky. So um, I decided that this would be my absolutely positively last. And I'm telling you when I say last, last fat girl something. Um, so, yeah, that's that, I think, with the intermittent fasting um i kind of no it's not because on those apps it is and fitbit too um it actually deals with the mental health aspect of it so it asks you to complete mindful meditations or whatever kind of meditation you you i have meditated for a long time and excuse me guys i have meditated for a while now, for years actually, and I have my own meditations that I like, so I don't necessarily listen to theirs, but I think it's a good thing to do have as a reminder. So I'm, excuse, pardon me, guys. I'm texting my mom. Uh, um, what I want. Sorry, and right now, this is for Thanksgiving. I need some Duncan Hines. Keto friendly. Friendly cake mix. Keto friendly, sorry. Cake mix. This is real life, y'all. This is how it happened. Uh, keto friendly. Icing. Frosting, I'm sorry. Chocolate. 
two cans. I'm going to add me some, um, I'm going to ask, add me some cream cheese to this frosting when I get it. And man, it's going to be good. So, oh, she just left out. I could have yelled down the stairs. I'm over here texting. Anyway, um, so that has been my life. <laughs> it has been good. And um, I'm actually really glad that I have t taken a good look at really what was going on. And I posted several videos prior with, um, you know, everybody's mental health, blah, blah, blah. So I was faking it till I was making it for real. You know, dealing with verbal abuse and not even verbal abuse, just negativity within a relationship. And feeling guilt because in my mind, I knew it was time, but I just did not want to let go. I mean, guys, it's been 10 plus years. So, I, you know, I was stuck in the routine that he and I have. And I, I mean, it's not like I don't love the man, but I love my ass too. And since I love me too... I'm going to have to do what's right for me. And you already sick. I, I'll worry about you later. Um, one day you might wake up. The thing is, you block me with no reason. So when you wake up, I I'm, I ain't going to be listening. So, <laughs> so that's that's your problem and something for him to deal with, not me. I ain't even worried about it. Anyway, um, yeah, it's just a little funny uh, how people are, you know, that you would be so threatened or not even or are you not happy you're not happy that I'm now showing signs of happiness I, I just don't get it now I understand that I have recently been going out but you could have went out you didn't want to that's on you that that ain't stopping me from going anywhere you know um I had gotten rid of my car during the pandemic because it was time to go. And um, I was working from home and I needed a car anyway. So when I talked about buying, going, go ahead and buying a car, I didn't need to. What you mean I don't need to? Now, I actually did need to. I have access to plenty of cars, but I'm going to need me a new car. And nobody said I was just giving up driving. Um, I just took that time to save up cash to pay for my car, whatever I get, whatever I decide to get. So you start playing with me because I didn't want no car, no. Lord, I, I just don't understand. I really don't. Um, what I want you to do, though, is I think I have recruited a new a person to diamond painting. Um, I guess I mentioned that my cousin is here while her home is being built. And so I am, she's going to do a diamond painting with me. And it'll be her first time. So I think I am going to video it and let her ask questions. So maybe it will be like a, um, a video where there's, you know, just a raw beginner. And I, it's like kind of like a how-to but with tips and tricks, so I can explain to her about the various glues, the types of drills, what to use with the waxes, the this, the that. So I'm thinking about that, but more than that, I'm just excited. I got somebody to diamond paint with. I think a re the reason a lot of us kind of do these channels or whatever, not that we're not passionate about diamond painting, but it's that it's not like, you have a group that lives around the corner from you that can you say, girl, I'm be diamond painting this up. Come on over for some wine and diamond painting. We don't have that. So this is a way of socializing, a way of making friends with people who have common interests. I think Gracie May always says like-minded people. <laughs> so it's a that thing. And um I'm getting ready to have that in my own living room. Now, granted, she won't be here but for another month, but at least um, we've set the tone, and we have planted the seed, and I, like the good person I am, 
have used peer pressure to influence her into this addictive hobby. So I am the enabler, and I'm proud of it. I'm the enabler, and I'm proud of it. All right, um, guys, I'm going to be cutting this short pretty soon. But what I did want to say is that I have two Facebook groups. They're going to be down in the description. My Both of them were based on the fact that my hobby was, was and is doll houses and miniatures. Since I have discovered diamond painting, I have changed the one group from Miniatures Mayhem and More to reflect this channel, which is Crafting Mayhem and More on Facebook. Please join me. Um, I have not been active in that group since I um, have been diamond painting, but I'm about to really get back into it and be active. Um, if you are not a creator and you join my group, you will be able to do Facebook Lives where we can sit, we can diamond paint um, all together. <laughs> I think it's only two people that can be in a live at one time, um, which is fine because you'll have a back and forth banter. You guys can pick somebody out of whoever comes into your live and you meet people that way. Um, I think that would be a very cool thing. Um, so please join my Facebook group as well as subscribe to this channel. Um, the Facebook group is Crafting Mayhem and More. If you would like to get into Dow Houses and Miniatures, I have a group called Dow House Chats Gone Wild. I just want to put out um, a disclaimer on Dow House Chats Gone Wild. It is an adult website. Even though we do dial houses and miniatures, and we, you, I have members who um, are LB, LGBT, the alphabet gang, who are a member of that, who post their dial houses with their dial house families doing the things that they do that are reflective of their lifestyle. I have people, I have artisans, artisans, I'm going to tell you that, in my group who are Dow House makers who create or recreate one twelve scale scenes of, let's say, a strip club. Um, so again, for the most part, it's a Dow House is a Dow House is a Dow House, meaning that you'll see Victorian Dow Houses, blah, blah, blah. But then you will see the um, People post risque miniatures of whatever it is. So, oh, did I just do that? See, walking and talking. Walking, talking, trying to chew gum. Lord, glad it didn't go on the floor. <laughs> All right. So, um, the, also, um, I do have an Instagram channel. That is Crafting Mayhem and More. Um, please follow me on Instagram. I have a TikTok, which I'm, I'm not sure what I signed up under on TikTok, or, nor am I sure what I signed up under Twitch, because I do have Twitch. I want to do some lives, um, but of course I don't have a thousand subscribers, no biggie, um, because now I have this streaming um, studio set up <laughs> where I can do lives on Facebook. So... I just want to say thank you guys for coming. Thank you for listening to me. Um, go on and on about me and what I'm doing. But it might benefit somebody. So I decided to. I'm back. I'm excited. I'm better than ever. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling healthy. I don't look at myself when I'm in my videos or on camera and see three chins. You know. And somebody else... Like my cousin said, well, you, you, you say you weigh that, but you don't look like it. I look like it to me when I look in the mirror, and I look like it to me when I'm on this camera. So that's an issue. Um, I'm going to have to fix that because where I now see a round face, if you look on the thumbnail picture that I have, I did not have a round face. So I'm trying to get back to that face. And, um, yeah, so if I see it, it's all about what I feel. It's all about, you know, what I want to do. I am 55 years old. Time is not moving backwards for me. 
Um, I'm going to make the best out of, let me see, I'm probably be all active till I'm 85. So for these next 30 years, I'm going to do what they say, do you, boo? I'm going to do me. I'm going to do me. And if it makes me feel good, then that's what I'm going to do. Oh, I know what I forgot to tell you guys. Waist training. Along with my fasting, along with my um, exercising, I am waist training. I don't know if you guys can see this. But, y'all, let me fix this one. So, this is a belt that I got from my cousin. It's a U-Wrap belt. Let me move over. Oops. Let me move over this way. And, y'all. So, I wear these all day. Now, I have the kind that you could wear either over or under your clothes that go under your bra. This is not tight today. If I had this wrapped like I wrap it when I go out... I would be snatched, snatched, I tell you. But anyway, I started out with the large, you know, the ones that have the three hooks over here, and it goes over your shoulder, and you close, it goes under your breast, and you hook, 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 hook. I started three weeks ago in a size large on the first hook. Second week, I was on the last hook. Monday, I put that thing on, and I was comfortable at my last hook, like too comfortable for what that waist trainer was supposed to feel like. I then got a, my medium out. I put the medium on the first hook. It was tight. I had to suck it in. Three days later, three days later, I, this is when I knew I had dropped two more pounds. Three days later, I had that hook on the last column of hooks eyelets um in three days for my size medium so if over the next couple days that size medium um i'm on that last hook and it becomes too too comfortable i'm gonna have to go down to a size small yeah one last time i had anything that was a size small Okay, my feet say small. I'm a size 6. Grown-ass woman, size 6. My 80-year-old granddaughter feet bigger than mine. That's the last thing I had. Anything small. Anything. Ha-ha, to TMI. <laughs> that was TMI. I hope Noel doesn't watch this. But anyway, I have not ordered a small fry in the last 20 years. So, for me to buy something in a size small... I am over the moon happy, and I hope you guys are happy too. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video with your friends, and I will see you guys very soon. Please, please join the Facebook group because I got a lot of stuff to talk about. See you later.